Pierre Frontier, aged 29, native of St. Albans, convicted of the attempted seduction of Marguerite Ron, daughter of Horst Ron, mayor of the village of Thibault. You're a fine young man to face 15 years in this place. Your wenching should have led you into less dangerous quarter. I know the mayor of Thibault. He's a man of considerable temper a man of considerable power and with a great love for his daughter. Most unfortunate. Fifteen years at hard labor. I'll let you in on a little secret, uh, Major. I really don't intend to be here that long. If you have any idea of escape, the walls are high and they're made of stone. When you work outside, you'll be heavily guarded. You'll do what you must do, and I'll do what I must do. All right, guards. Take him to his cell. Number six. You with the old man, sir? What do you think, Bardic? Yes. That will be good for him. When he sees Sydney, he'll understand what 15 years at hard labor means. Hey, Sydney, you've got to sell me. Tommy, stay just a little while longer. Tommy, you, you're my friend, and I, I like you very much, but sometimes you try my patience beyond endurance. Well, Tommy, I, I don't like to have to shout at you. Will you come out, please? If you'll forgive me, I, I must say your manners are becoming completely unacceptable. I beg your pardon, sir. Are all sir. of our past labors to be jeopardized by this silly mood of yours? What do you want? Why, um, uh, nothing at all. I merely want to make the acquaintance of your friend here. How do you do, sir? I am, uh, Pierre Fontier. At your service, sir.
better rest now. can't go on working. <laughs> You'll go on, all right. There is no rest, period. Before this nonsense, you go to the pit, understand? Go back to work. Pick it up. Pick it up! 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 Take it up! Take it up! Take it up! Take it up. Stand back! You've taken too much on yourself. We'll discuss your punishment later. In the meantime, you can find your quarters. Take him to the pit. No! Help him to his cell. Yes. Come on, man. The pit is very interesting. But you will visit there someday. The rats won't hurt you as long as you stay awake. But when you grow tired, so tired and fall asleep, they creep out and tear the flesh from your body. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me, my friend. Forgive me for what you suffered because of me. Here. I, I've been saving a little water every day. Uh, I am Sydney. Uh, uh, I am... You uh, are Pierre. You, Pierre. We are friends. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Tell me. Tell me. Come out. There's good news. We have a new friend. You, you hear me, Tommy? There's three of us now, so we will be stronger. We cannot fail. All for three, and three for all. All for three, three for all. All for three, and three for me. Me for three, and three for me. Three for me, three for me. Three for me. and become strong again, my friend. I have a secret for you. A very wonderful secret. And I'm going to tell it to you soon.
No. Tommy? You are Tommy? Ah! ah! Go away, rat! Or whoever you are. This corridor must be cleaned by tomorrow. What are you? Are you something other than what you seem to be? Or are you uh, just a rat? Ah. Shoot! secret is known. It's a wonderful secret. I want to share it with you. Yes. The tunnel. It's almost finished. I think. A few more days, perhaps. Then we'll be beyond the walls. Free! Come on, come on, let's begin now. Regain your strength. Oh, now you rest. Tomorrow oh, we begin. Oh. Sidney, what's the matter? Even after so many years, I was young. Yes, I, I was 21 when I arrived in that evil place. Here, give me that crutch. Now get out of here and hurry. Here, Tommy. Thank you, kind sir. Can I be of any service to you? Well, yes. Maybe you could direct me to the clock store around here called Thorber's. It's very near here, sir. 
take the first street past the marketplace. Do you want me to show you? If you don't mind. I'm glad to do Good. it. Good. Away we go. Here we are at last. I'm going to ask him to give you a big cup of steaming hot chocolate, eh? No, sir, but thanks, Mr. Say. Please go on in. Hey, wait a minute. Where do you think you're going anyway? Oh. Why don't you want to go in? It's because of Mr. Sorbonne. He scares me to death. Do I scare you too? No, sir. Not a bit. <laughs> well, then let's go in. Mr. Sorbonne will not raise a finger to a friend of his own nephew. Understand? Come on now. Let's go in. Very good day to you, sir. What do you want? Uh, ah, get out of here! See? Look at that, I'm your... How many times do I have to tell you that I don't want you hanging around here, eh? Maybe next time I catch you looking around here, I'll kill you! I swear to uh, I swear to God! Uh, you rapscallion, good for nothing. You're after me every day to see if they can steal anything, eh? And I'm sure that their parents send them. Of that, I'm dead sure of that. Dead sure. In this neighborhood, people can't go on working as they should. No, sir. They have to steal from me. They have to leech from another man's work. Parasites. But the day that I find one of them lurking here, I'll... Huh? And you. What do you want? State your business. Excuse me. This letter sign, sir, is for you. Eh? So you're the youngest of the brood of my dear brother Martin, huh? Yes, sir. I thought he'd perish. It's now almost 20 years since I've seen him. <laughs> and the first piece of news that I have from him is that he's sending me his son for me to educate. Give him a room. And give him food. Who does he think I am? I think you better go back home now. But, but Mr. Thorber, sir, I only... What does he think, anyway, that I'm an idiot? Or is he trying to take advantage of me like these people here? But it's Mr. very Thorber, convenient. I... Rearing a house full of children and then sending them to someone else for support. Mr. No, Thorber, sir. I... Let's work. And if he's unable to work, let him die. But, Mr. Thorber, I've been trying to say... What? I want to go to work. To work? Who would hire you? I counted on you, sir. Please let me work here, about the house. I'll do anything you desire. But I haven't come for a handout. Handle me, do you cook? A little, sir. Reading and accounting? Yes, indeed, sir. But I couldn't give you any wages. I'm barely able to make ends meet. No, I'm at your disposal, sir. You may stay. M many thanks, Uncle. But you'll have to work hard. Yes, I will. And very hard. Yes, whatever. And remember, say. I can't give you a single penny. Very well. You sleep on that couch on the other side of the store. That's the deal. You help me, and I will help you by giving you a bed. And food to eat, huh? Only a bed and your food. Understood? Yes, sir. Just a bed yes, sir. and your food. Yes, sir. Just a bed, 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 bed and your food. Just a bed, 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 bed and your food. Just a bed, 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 bed and your food.
Sidney. Sidney. Uh, what? What is it? Oh, nothing. Were you sleeping? Yes, sir, but it took me a long time. The watches, you know, they make so much noise. They never stop. I, uh... <laughs> they frighten you, don't they? <laughs> Tuck. companions that have been with me always. They say that nothing makes one more frightened than to sleep in a room full of clocks. But when you've grown accustomed to the strange sound, and it quiets, and you relax, a hundred bells start to ring out at once. One hundred different bells. Little bells, big bells, bells laughing, bells crying, slow bells, gloomy bells, bells that cry out in the night making each agonized pulsation a rasping metal melody. <laughs> you won't find it easy to get accustomed to sleeping in a room full of clocks. <laughs> good night, good night. <laughs> Pleasant dreams, huh? I'll take care of her. Look, Mama. A vase just like Aunt Evelyn. Huh? Here now, give me that. What's the price? Two guineas. What? Mr. Thorber. Hmm? You should be ashamed asking two guineas for this cracked vase. Because don't think I didn't notice that a piece has been pasted on this vase to make itself a new, eh? I'll give you one pound. Good day, madam. Well, a pound and three shillings. Good day. Shall we say a pound and... And I bid you a good day, madam. <laughs> good day. Let's go, dear. Come. Huh. From what I could see, sir, you really didn't want to sell that cracked old vase. Not for less than two guineas. If it wasn't broken, it would sell for at least ten pounds. If you only knew, sir. 
What? Nothing. It is curious. If you know how much I think about this cracked vase. About the vase? But why? Don't you like it? No, no, on the contrary. I find it very, very uh. beautiful. That's why I'm so sad that it's cracked. Because it's not perfect. Yeah, that Venus, the one in the rear, she lacks arms, but that doesn't make her less valuable. Yes, but I don't think in terms of material value alone, sir, only it's perfection. It's a wonder this hasn't already broken. Yes, but broken and everything, I can still sell it for a good price. So be careful with it. Good morning, sir. Good morning, young lady. May I help you? What do you want? Buddy Chance, sir. Do you have a clock I could present to my mother? A clock that's pretty. Not very large, but not too small. How much do you have? What is like this? I'm shopping around. But, but pardon me, Mr. Thorburn. Maybe the young lady would prefer to see some of our clocks before deciding. Yes, you Come could with choose me. from For those example, over look there. at this. But the eagle is much too elegant, huh? Uh -huh. Or, or this one of Diana singing. When it strikes 12, it plays a little pieces of music. And how much is that one? Three oh, pounds. Oh, no. It's too expensive. Mm -hmm. You have something less expensive? That small one is two and a half pounds. That other round one, two. The one with the woodcutters, one pound and six shillings. One with the woodcutter? Yes, the one up there. Do you see it? The pendulum makes the figures work as though they were cutting some wood. If you like, I'll bring it down so you can see it. If it's no trouble. Oh, not at all. I'm glad to, to do it. I'll bring it down. It's a shame. Imbecile. Ingrate. Look what you've done. And this is why I support you? This is why I don't let you go hungry? Idiot! This is how you repay all I've done for you. I give you a job, food, and a bed. I try to raise you so you won't have to rob, beg, or steal, and you, just to show off before this dumb wench, get out! You bring something that's more valuable than... more valuable than... <laughs> but I'm telling you, you'll pay for this broken vase. Plenty. You know very well you'll pay. You'll work both here and in town. You work until you've paid the last penny of the price of that vase, see? Do you hear me? Until the last penny has been paid. business playing near the water crippled as he was. No, of course not. He couldn't swim a stroke. Well, it's a sad, sad day for his mother. Is dinner ready? Yes, sir. When my uncle came home, I knew he had found out about Tommy's death. Everyone was sorry for him, except my Uncle Thorber. In some way, he was glad that Tommy would not be around anymore. He hated Tommy because he too was imperfect, like the cracked face, the eye that makes him so imperfect, his frightening face that made him hate everyone around him. And I knew I must help him, too. That I must end his imperfections. Hear me, Sydney. 
Yes, sir. You buy every morning a quart of milk at the market. Yes, sir. Mm. I have a big cup for my breakfast, huh? Yes. But a big cup is not a whole quart. It's only half a quart. You drink the rest. Uh, no, 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 sir. No. You mean you throw it away? No, 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 sir. I don't do that. But then what in the devil do you do with it? Well, uh, every morning around 6 o'clock before you get up, I... I see Tommy. He's the crippled kid that lived, lives next door. Mm. And I give him that milk. You give the milk to that kid? Yes, sir. But why in the world would you? And every morning you give him a free glass? Gratis? Well, why? Just because I feel sorry for him, because he can't run or play. How he fights to hold back the tears. How he tries. He's not uh, perfect, sir. He's not normal. He suffers. He suffers much. <laughs> Uh, yes, well, I'm going to bed. Clean up all this mess before you retire. Yes, sir. Hope you rest well, Sidney. You too, sir. Oh, Sidney. Sir? Before going to bed, I wanted you to know that you're not dealing with an idiot. It's very difficult to trick me. Whatever you think, sir. But if it doesn't make any difference to you, I think I'm I'll... I'm telling you to drink that milk because your little friend won't be by. Why not, sir? A little while ago on my way over, I saw several people gathered at the house across the street and they were a pretty sad group. They found that little cripple boy drowned. Poor lad. Maybe now you will drink that milk yourself. Good night, Sidney. <laughs> After my uncle went to his bed, my mind would not rest thinking of Tommy. Lower yourself into the hole. Go to the end of the tunnel and bring back all the dirt you can carry in this blanket. must transfer Pierre to a different cell. Only a few more feet to go. More feet to freedom. <laughs> well, Sidney, you seem in good spirits. Oh, uh, uh, the old man's uh, just happy. Uh, he's been telling me uh, how lonely he's been until now. Let him speak for himself. Tell me, Sidney, why are you so happy? Uh, well, because... Uh, well, because I, I have friends now. I, 
I'm not alone anymore. Well, Sidney, I'm glad you have a friend. Because Pierre must soon be transferred to another cell. But anyway, you still have Tommy to keep you company. Come with me to my office. I started the tunnel upward. I he's watching. Someday I'm going to kill that character. Quiet, here he comes. Are you two looking for trouble? We were just... I don't care what you were doing. You had it pretty easy. But no more, I promise you, and sometime soon. I personally will see to that. I, I was getting worried. I thought the guards might have discovered you. What does he do with it? I don't know. He, he doesn't tell me. What are you doing? I saw you hide something in your coat. What is it? Nothing. It, it, it was nothing. Come here, let me see what you got there. I must give them to my friend. Your friend? He's... Who's your friend? Well, he, he, he's not here. He, he, he's in the tunnel. He, he has to eat these. He, he needs the strength to dig. So, your friend is digging a tunnel. Who is your friend? Where is he digging this tunnel? No, I, I can't. It, it's our secret. I, I can't tell. Very well. Maybe you can tell me later. In the meantime, get back to work. I've uh, something very important to tell you, sir. Let's go. I've discovered two of the prisoners are planning to escape. Which prisoners? It's that old man, Sidney. He told me his friend is digging a tunnel. Tommy? It's time to go. Sydney, forget Tommy. We don't have time. Now come on. Now, Pierre, we have a score to settle. Where is he? You're new. Well, you don't know about Sydney. However, come with me. Where is he? He's not here. Where is he?
40 years, he's been here not to improve his mind. Sometimes he's a raving maniac. Tom is dead. All of our plans for nothing. Come on, Sidney. Without Tommy, there's, there's no reason to go. We're planned together. Other plans? It's normal with any of us. But you can't leave Tommy here. Not, not in this cold dungeon. He'd want a, a nicer resting place. You know, by, by a nice stream, perhaps. Beneath a tree. Come on. Tommy, you rest here beneath this tree. They're coming. Come on, Sidney, we've got to keep ahead of them. There's a farm not far from here. I know the old man and the daughter. She'll help us with some food and clothes. Come on. Hide in here. I'll keep watch.
Yeah. Teresa. Oh. Your clothes. You're wearing a prisoner's clothes. Yes, Teresa. I'm in trouble. Trouble? What kind of trouble? The mayor's daughter, she... Well, I was caught in her room. But, Teresa, I didn't love her. I swear it. That's what you always say, Pierre. But it won't happen again. Teresa, I promise. Teresa, it wasn't my fault. Her father had threatened to place her in a convent. Don't you, Teresa? Just help me. There's no other place I can go to. There's, to there's nobody else I can turn to. Here, listen to me. I'm married. My father died and left me this farm. They couldn't have come this far. Perhaps they're hiding if that farm went past. Back there. We'll go back and search the place. If you find anything, fire one shot. Look behind every tree, every bush. this way. You take the other side close to the house. We'll have them surrounded and they won't be able to escape. I'll look in the house. If the scapees aren't there, I'll meet you at the stream. An old man escaped with me. He's down in the barn in the loft asleep. I'll bring some of my husband's clothes and some food. And you'll need a razor, too. Please hurry. We don't have much time. Sydney, Sydney, wake up. We have to be leaving soon. The guards are coming. Pierre, Pierre. They found us. The guards. They'll take us back to the cell. No, Sydney. It's a girl. I know her. And she's going to help us. I'm looking for two men to escape from the prison. Well, I haven't seen anybody around here. What do they look like? Well, there's a young one and an old one. And they're in this area? Well, we lost a trail in the stream up there, and we spread out trying to pick it up. I saw the barn and figured they might be here. Are these men dangerous? Well, escapees are always dangerous. What will happen if you catch them? 
First, I'll give them a good working over. Then, I'll throw them into the pit. Well, I hope you're nicer to your women than you are to your prisoners. Well, that depends on the woman. I told you, I haven't seen anyone around here. You know, I'd better take a look anyway. Why don't we talk about that? Well, I guess you're right. There's nobody... Look, old man, look. Here's a place we can hide. Come on. The guards won't follow us into the cemetery. Hide in here. I'll keep a lookout. But no, wait. We stay together. I have to keep watch so we don't get trapped in here. I'll come back just as soon as they've left. You promise you'll come back? Yes, I swear it. Probably in here. No, this is a 
governor's cemetery. We could get into serious trouble. Let's go. Rest, my friend. I'll keep watch. Poor Tommy. Poor little boy. He suffered so very much. Just, just like you. Suffer no more. I fixed that. Yes, I killed him. I remember the last time I saw him. It was a place like this. A cemetery. Tell me they took 10 hours to bury that kid. Not at all, sir. Uh, after the burial, I went to see Tommy's parents. I did my very best to try and console them. Uh, well, I had dinner already. If you want to eat something, there are leftovers. If you heat No, them. thank you, sir. Not now. I think uh, I'd prefer to have a cup of hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The little boy didn't come by for his milk this morning, That's eh? That's right, sir. <laughs> You're lucky, Sidney. Very lucky. Why do you say that? Because the funeral took place today and it happens to be Sunday. And I didn't have to let you off work. <laughs> yes, indeed, sir. But, but all this sadness doesn't seem to have affected you much. You seem almost joyful, as though you'd arrived from a festival. And for what reason should I be unhappy, sir? Now Tommy's not suffering. Now that he's dead, he's not imperfect anymore. He's no longer different. He doesn't exist. All of this foolishness because of a cripple. I'm sure that he'd been able to walk, he'd been the worst of the lot. Much the worst of them. Better lock up. Right away, sir. Just a minute. What is it? Now I remember. Your hand's been fixed. Twenty years ago, I went to visit with your mother. I believe you were three or four. Yes. What then? Oh, nothing at all, and yet, I seem to recollect there was something wrong with your hand. As though it was crippled and blotched. I think you'd been born like that. Yes. It was malformed, but then... It was corrected. <laughs> yes. It's curious, sir. Now I'm beginning to realize something. What's that? You must feel very bad. Very sad. And very unfortunate with that eye. I've thought many times about that bad eye. That eye, sir, is not a perfect eye. That eye... That eye is different somehow. Like the crack in the vase that was broken. Or a broken heart. Or that crippled leg of Tommy. Or the bad hand of your neck. <laughs> My bad hand. The hand that I had when I was a child. Yes. You must be very sad and unfortunate. 
well now. Bedtime. Time to lock up. Pleasant dreams. Good night, Sydney. Good evening, Mr. Uh, uh, what are you doing here, Sydney? Nothing. I, I was just watching. Uh, I want to prove an idea of mine tonight. Sydney, what are you thinking of doing? But it's I warn you that I you see. Uh, After having turned off all the watches, I'm bothered by one still. One? One. The only one ticking. Don't you hear it? No. No. Ha! Yet it's very, very near us. See? Do you feel the tick? Tuck? No. Feel it? It's running. It's still running. And I think we should stop it at once, sir. Sydney. No, no, don't be afraid. I do it because I have to, not to frighten you. You must feel exactly like the vase and Tommy and your nephew and so many others. My nephew! Uh, no, yes. My nephew, no, no. Yes, your nephew. We traveled together in the same coach. He told me how sad and unfortunate he felt because of that hand, so black and cruelly twisted. That bad hand repelled everyone. Children. Everyone. He suffered because of it. But he doesn't suffer anymore. No. Please, please, I don't want to die. I don't, I don't. Don't do this, Sydney. I don't want to die. I'll give me everything, even the money. Everything I have in the world. Anything at all. Just don't do anything you'll regret, for God's sake. I'm only thinking of your health, no, sir. No, don't do it! Don't, don't do it! I don't want to die! Sit! Sit! Sorry, but uh, we don't open for another hour. We are from the police department, sir. Pardon the inconvenience, but it so happens a neighbor said he heard a scream coming from this house around midnight. And we've come here to investigate the complaint. Yes. Yes, of course. And why shouldn't you come to investigate? Please come in. Right this way. Come with me, gentlemen. Come right in, gentlemen. Oh, look. I hope you'll disregard this unmade bed. 
As you can see, it's quite a mess. I just got up. Uh, here, I'll, I'll get another chair. I know you must be very tired, so please, here, uh, rest for a while. Besides, it's my pleasure having two guests, two inspectors of the police, to drop in for a visit. The life in a watch shop is very quiet. It's much too quiet. It would bore you to death. After 14 daily hours of work for 60 years, this is the very first vacation my uncle's been able to, able to take. Most of the nights I... As you were saying, sir? I can't remember what it was. Uh, is there something wrong, sir? Huh? No. No, no, no. But why do you ask? You were speaking of your uncle. You didn't finish. Pardon me again, sir. But don't you hear a sound? A sound? What sound? A noise. A sound. It sounds something like a... rat. What's the matter? I'm sorry, what did you say? I, I can't hear you. Is something wrong? Uh, 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 no, 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 nothing at all. It, 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 just that I wanted to tell you about my pitiful uncle. But can't you hear that awful racket? The what, sir? The, the noise. Maybe it's only because I'm speaking too loudly. And then, of course, you can't hear it, nor do you know what I'm talking about. It's a very good thing that you don't know the terrible secret in this house that he's trying to tell you. It's his vengeance approaching. It's because I dared to stop all his clocks. I only wanted their hearts to stop beating for a while. And they did it. Paralyzed every little heart into silence. I stopped his heart also. But now he has fixed it. You see, he knows all about repairing clocks. And he finally managed to fix his own heart. Hear it ticking? It's ticking. It's ticking, 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 ticking. Can't you hear it beating? But it's all for nothing. Won't he stop that dreadful noise? There's nothing he can do, nothing. Please, that noise! Stop that dreadful racket, please! Can't you hear? His beating heart! You mean to say you really can't hear it? That horrible beating heart! I'll do anything if you can stop that beating heart! All right! You win! I killed him! He's right under your feet! Underneath boards! Stop yourself what I've done! I killed him and hit him there! Now stop that heart! Stop it beating! Bury him! Bury him! Do with me anything you want, only stop that beating heart! Make it stop! Make it stop! Please stop that heartbeat! Stop it! Stop that infernal beating heart! Stop it for God's sake! like all the others, uh, but they do not suffer now, and soon you will no longer suffer. So they untie me. You will For God's sake, Sidney, untie me! In the name of heaven! No. You're crazy! I, I, I,
Imperfect. 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 Imperf